Miss. Okay. I'd like to call the meeting of the BUHS number six board, uh, April 1st, 2013. Welcome, everyone. And we're starting right at Joe, just about at 7 o'clock for a change. Sometimes we're a few minutes late. Okay. Um, we'd like to start with the uh, clerk's report, and that would include the approval of the minutes from the March 18th meeting which have been distributed. Is there a motion? I'll move the minutes of March 18th as presented. Second. Okay, Vicki and Sean seconding. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections to those minutes? If not, all in favor of approving them as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, opposed or abstentions? Everybody, yeah, okay. All right, are there any communications? Okay, is there anything else for the clerk's report? All right, we'll move on to recognition of groups and individual visitors. I think everybody here is part of the group or a presenter, so uh, we have no visitors at this point. If any come in, we'll recognize them. Okay, next, consent agenda. A motion to go into consent agenda. So moved. Lori? Second. Ruth? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we are in consent agenda and we'll start as is our habit with finance. Okay, finance met on the 20th of March at 7 a.m. And we approve warrant numbers 1171, 387,343.12. And we also, we had no payrolls. We also um, discussed uh, travel and conference procedures and there will be policies drawn up for local, regional, national, international uh, travel, and we realized that we don't have any, didn't have any plans for a policy for intergalactic travel, and so we're asking Ian to draw up a policy for intergalactic travel. Of course, keeping in mind today's date, <laughs> and um, we're still we still have pending the um, the town water uh, discrepancy, and Mr. Clark is looking into that. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, April third, two thousand thirteen, at seven a.m. at the central office. Okay, any questions? So the policy committee will take that up at their earliest convenience? Absolutely. That didn't come about as a result of our wanting to send anybody on intergalactic travel. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to add, I was, um, I was driving across country last uh, month or two ago, and it was a place in Iowa, and it was the future birthplace of Captain James T. Kirk. He <laughs> 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 got a little monument there and everything. It hasn't happened That was yet. pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so much for April Fool's Day. All right. Um, planning and policy. It has not met since last meeting. Okay. Teacher curriculum committee. Um, we met earlier this evening. Um, we went over a couple of 1% requests um, to, to work with the funds that are available for this year. Um, we approved those. We also set up a schedule for 1% for the 1% that would start July 1st. Um, and 
the administration is going to get that information out to the faculty to get those into us. Um, and then we also went over the interview schedule um, and where some board members could serve. And if there's other board members who weren't at TCC who would like to spend some time serving on some interview committees at the high school, please see Mr. Perrin because he's definitely got a number of interviews that need to get filled. So. You, um, are you going to update us yes. in, during your report on that? Okay, then we can discuss it further and see if there are folks that want to be part of it. Okay. I also note that, that Mr. Davidson was re-elected unanimously as chair of the TC. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, BAMS committee. Has not met since our last meeting. So you haven't been re-elected chair of that? I have not. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, good luck. Hopefully you'll uh, have a two. Two you for. Could, um, do you know when the next BAM? The next BAMS meeting is scheduled at this point, but we need to have a discussion later during this meeting. But it's scheduled to be at 6.30 before our next board meeting. Um, but that's on the 15th, so we need to have a conversation about that meeting. Because it falls during the vacation. We have that. Um, if we have that meeting, then it will be at 6.30 before that meeting. WRCC committee. That's not now. And the uh, regional advisory board was uh, postponed. Um, it was to happen during the, the two weeks ago tomorrow snowstorm. So we postponed that to April 23rd. 23rd at noon here in the Cusick room. Okay, anything else for consent agenda? Not, is there a motion yes. to? Oh. I'm sorry, I just was asking if the WRCC committee always meets at noon. No, it's the, 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 that's the regional advisory board oh. meets at noon. The, uh, the WRCC is an early morning group. <laughs> um, and the regional advisory board doesn't always meet here. It moves around some, although we've now kind of decided that it's probably best to have most of the meetings here. We used to move it around so that people get a chance to see some of the other schools we've had at Leland and Gray, Wilmington, Hinsdale, or I can think uh, of Steen, Bellas Austin, Falls. Bellas Falls, right. Um, but the attendance seems to be best for whatever reason when it's here. So we, uh, the group has more or less decided that it's probably for the time being, let's just have meetings here on a regular basis once a quarter or so. And just to confirm, it's the Regional Advisory Board for the Career Center. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I move approval of consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Okay. <coughs> we'll move on to administrative reports. <coughs> I guess. Everybody's got something to say tonight. You know, so, uh, why don't we start with Jerry? Again, here we go. Um, okay, I have two openings um, that I didn't have two weeks ago that I now have to report to you uh, this evening. Uh, one is middle school science. That um, science position on Team Draco has been vacated by Jenny Magoon, who was hired on a one-year contract, and she will not be returning for next year. So we have a middle school science opening. Um, and then I also have a resignation that I would need um, acceptance on. And that is a middle school math vacated by um, Rebecca Friedman. Um, and she regrets to inform us that she'll be resigning from her position at Brattleboro Area Middle School and will not be returning to teach seventh grade this fall. She's, it's been a privilege working with you and representing BAMS. Do we have a copy of the letter? Do we want to? Go ahead and act on that at this point. I move to accept with regret the resignation of Ms. Friedman. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Okay. So currently, um, the science position um, has been posted because we knew about that um, about a week ago. Those, that position is closing on Friday. Uh, we're at about 20 applicants at this at this time. We'll try to uh, wean that down a little bit. 
uh, but if there is someone who would like to be on our hiring committees, <laughs> we would be more than happy to uh, um, let, let me know, um, either for the math or the science, or even both. Could, could when you get those scheduled, could you send them out via email we so that people can look at what's available, what they're available, and what they can what they can do? Sure. Chances are, um, at this point, I would say that the soonest the, that we would be doing the science anyway would be the week after vacation because of vacation being in there. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of this activity going mm -hmm. on here, and will be probably for most of the spring. And um, I know the board. Everybody wants to help, uh, but it's it's a challenge coordinating it all. I have a question about that. Yeah. Just I know that there are a lot of interviews happening, and if we were to get the schedule of interviews by email, is there any concern that there's a lack of consistency? Like if I can show up to one, but I can't show up to follow-ups, or well, basically, if you if you're signing up to do it, you're signing up to do. All of those all through the completion, right? Which is like some of the ones that I know that that they have at the high school level. There's, there, it's, a multi, day. it's multiple days, so you have to be able to commit to doing all of the days yeah. for that position. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what. Yeah. You know, that's why it's important to have those dates so you can look at your schedule and say, okay, I can do these couple of days, or I can't. You know. Yeah, particularly in the first first <coughs> round where you know it is going to be more than one day to get it all done. Uh, there's some of us that have a real challenge taking a whole day, uh, but when the second level um, comes in, might be added to the added to the mix. Uh, so yeah, the, you keep that communication going. That'll be helpful. Um, and the other thing, I'll just uh, give you a little update on our um, transition timeline. This Thursday is our first parent parent orientation evening where all of the incoming 7th graders, and this year, for the first time, our incoming 8th graders, or what will be our 8th graders from Guilford, um, those parents will all arrive at 7 o'clock at the, the at BAMS, at the multipurpose room, where we do a full-blown um, full PowerPoint presentation to tell them all about the school. So again, any of you would like to uh, join us 7 o'clock this Thursday. Um, and then next week, uh, Paula Starkweather, Carrie Sullivan, the two guidance counselors from middle school, and myself will be taking our tour on the road and um, heading out to all of the different uh, classrooms of the rising 7th and rising 8th graders to visit with them. Much shorter PowerPoint, but they have their first connection with us now, the, the adults, and then they'll be coming to visit the school um, sometime in May. So we're in a uh, we'll very full swing of our transition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Mr. Perrin. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we've actually, like Jerry, we're getting ready for the transition for our uh, students coming to us. And currently, we are scheduling all of our eighth graders at the various sending schools. We're also scheduling our, our own students in grades 9 to 11, getting ready for next year. Um, we hope to have a, a rough draft of our, of our master schedule by the beginning of May. Um, we'll take a look at that, see where we need to fill in holes and what we need to, to change, and then that will continue to be kind of massaged throughout the summer. Um, we're very lucky to have Paul Cohen, who is a scheduling master, to help us do that. Um, so we're lucky to have Paul. Um, this is not an April Fool's joke, but you may know that our Dean of Students, Kate Margaitis, is pregnant, um, and she is due very soon. Um, her replacement for the rest of the year is a uh, young woman, some of you may remember, Miss Jennifer Brown, um, who actually used to be an assistant principal. Um, she's coming out of retirement, and she will serve as um, Kate Margaitis' replacement for the rest of the year. The yeah, that's why she was standing out front the other morning. Right. So Jenny's been in a few days getting used to it, talking to Kate about um, you know, how discipline is done and a little bit about how the software works, not that it's new. Yeah. And um, so we're lucky to have Jenny's experience um, to help us close out the year. Um, Kate has said she'll come back and do graduation. She's grown very close to many of the students, the seniors, and she wants to see them graduate. <coughs> um, speaking of leaving, um, on Saturday the 6th, Maggie Cassidy and Gia Adoskal will be leading 15 students to Geneva, Switzerland um, for our Swiss exchange. 
um, each of our BOHS students is going to be hosted by the same student that they hosted in September when the Swiss came over. And also heading to Europe uh, will be Karen Sebastian and former teacher Kathy Sicoccio. They'll be leaving for Leipzig, Germany with eight students on Saturday, April 13th. Um, later on um, in the fall, we'll get these, those students from Leipzig will come and join us. So, you know, we've got great relationships with various schools and we're very excited to kind of keep that exchange going where the kids come over and, and our kids meet their parents and then they come over and their kids meet our parents. It's kind of a fun, fun day um, and a fun couple of weeks for everybody. Um, also, um, Mike and I are actually really pleased to let everybody know that we are going to be launching a, a pilot summer school this summer. And um, we're, gonna, we're looking for two 15 student cohorts. The first cohort will be students that are currently in eighth grade that are coming up to ninth grade. And we're going to begin advertising this program tomorrow after you all get the, the chance to hear about it. And that program for the rising ninth graders is intended to give them experience and study skills that they'll need as they enter high school. Um, as part of that program, which begins July 1st and goes through August 2nd, it's a five-week program, we'll also take those students on various um, outings in the community. Um, we want to take them to some businesses so they can kind of see what are some career opportunities in the area. Um, we also want to take them to some take them to some local colleges so they can kind of see um, what kind of things lie ahead for them after high school, whether it's career or college. We're very excited about that. Um, at the same time, we're also going to be working with some of our ninth graders going into 10th grade, another group of 15, to help those students who have struggled during ninth grade to kind of help them regain some credit and uh, begin to look ahead to what happens for them after high school as well. We're lucky to have three great teachers uh, from the Career Center. Amy Anthony is going to be helping us. Um, Daniel Colony from English at BUHS and uh, Michelle Page from Math at BUHS will be joining us. They'll be assisted by Rhonda Weingartner as the counselor and coordinator of the program. So um, we're extremely excited about that. We've never actually had a formal summer school at BUHS. And uh, we're going to start small, work out the kinks, make sure it works well and then hopefully expand it in the, in the years ahead. So, um, you want to add on to anything on that? You said it all, Steve. Thank you. Um, <laughs> finally, some great news, a couple of recommendations I'd like to make to the board. And uh, <clears throat> I want to thank um, Ricky, who spent a day with us um, during our interviews, and I want to thank Ruth, who has spent time doing, so far, English interviews and social studies. So thank you both for your time. I appreciate it. I know, I know time is tough. First, uh, I'm extremely pleased to recommend the appointment of Ms. Liz DeNord as department chair for the art department. Um, Liz has been an instructor at BOHS since August of 1996, and after Gary Blomgren passed away in November, she has uh, assumed the duties of art department head. Um, Liz is an active artist as well as a master teacher, and um, the committee for that hiring consisted of Sandy Cormier, Andrew Haas, Richard Heller, their department, Nancy Johnson, Steve Rice, Ricky, and myself. Um, so I would ask the board to approve uh, the appointment of Liz DeNord as art department chair. And I would also ask if we could make it, um, rather than making it effective July, we could make it effective now. So I, I would move the appointment of Liz DeNord as art department chair effective immediately. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Choice. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> along the same lines, um, with Liz becoming a department head, that creates a an open position for us. And since Gary um, went out on leave, we've had a, a young woman named Allison Cram who has been teaching for three years, and she has filled in with grace and style. She came in and work with some students who were somewhat reluctant because they'd gotten used to Gary and they were, you know, obviously upset with Gary's passing. She did a great job of working with those students. This semester, she's really firmly established herself as her own teacher. Um, she's currently teaching ceramics, television production, and foundations in art. Um, Allison has worked at schools in Woodstock and Grand Isle, all of it in Vermont. Um, her, I've checked her references. They are stellar. And as I've said, her work at BUHS has been has been exemplary. 
Um, she's currently licensed in the state of Vermont as an art teacher. I would ask the board to appoint Allison Cram as an art teacher at VHS. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve Allison Cram as our teacher for VHS. Do you want that? Effective? Oh, she's she's she'll finish the year as because um, she's getting. Yeah, she'll finish the year and then July first that would be okay. Because right. she's technically a long term sub right now. Right. right. <clears throat> okay. Was uh, Melanie is on the second? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Um, next, um, <laughs> we've been busy. Um, I'm pleased to recommend the appointment of Mr. Casey Dean as a social studies teacher. Um, Mr. Dean is currently our diversity teacher. He would replace Tim Kipp, who is retiring at the end of this year. Uh, Casey has taught diversity since February of 2009. Prior to that, he taught at various high schools in Vermont. Um, two people applied for this internal posting, and two people were interviewed today, as a matter of fact. The interview committee was Ruth Barton, Heather Cohen from the Social Studies Department, Assistant Principal Chris Day, and Department Head Doug Crock. I would ask that the board appoint Casey Dean as social studies teacher. I move to uh, approve the hiring of Mr. Casey Dean for this position in the social studies department. Second. That's July 1st. Yes. July 1st. Yes. Okay. <coughs> on that one. Some rest got it. Yeah. Oh, that was a second. Uh, that was a okay. second. Okay. Rest. I move fast. I mean. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> extensions? Okay. Last one. Um, <coughs> oh, wait, there's more. Right. Um, we recently got some, some uh, bad news regarding our Title I funding. And as a result of sequestration and the uncertainty surrounding Title I funding for next year, um, we've opted to reduce our Title I positions. That would mean that um, Ms. Michelle Page would uh, no longer be employed as a Title I teacher. Luckily, we have an, an opening in the math department. Ms. Laura Carson is not returning next year. Um, I would ask the board to uh, appoint Ms. Michelle Page for the open position in the math department, effective July 1st. Okay. Could you give us a little background? Sure. On um, Michelle has been here for three years at VOHS. Um, she's done a great job in Title I. You may remember from TCC, she's one of two teachers that helped develop the Problem of the Day series that um, she and Natasha Jones shared with the TCC a few, I think last year? Or two last, years? Years? It was last year. Yeah. Last year. And those are still currently in use, and now they use those to prep for SATs and will adapt those as their kind of core roles into place as well. Um, she's done a great job in Title I. Um, she's active in our, in our community in the arts department. Um, prior to working in, in Brattleboro, she was employed at Colchester High School for one year. She was reduced in force at Colchester, came down here three years ago. Just for clarification, do we need to do the resignation first? It's a non renewal. That's just a non renewal. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure that we, we don't yeah. screw ourselves up. So I would. Move that we. Oh, is that this? No, I actually had a oh. question for clarification. I didn't know if we wanted to get it on the floor before I could ask more questions. Okay. Does she have a background in math? She does. She does. She does. <laughs> yes. She's licensed. She's a certified. She's a licensed math teacher. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good question. <laughs> that was, that's a good question. Yeah. All right. So I'll move. Go for it. Move <laughs> that we. I'm sorry. I forgot her name. Michelle. Michelle Page. Page. Michelle Page. That we accept uh, Michelle Page or. Uh, uh, Award the, the job of math teacher to Michelle Page. Effective July. July so first. Second. Second by Ricky. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? Thank you. I remember that that one percent uh, program we went to because we went to the math department yeah. and uh, it, was, it was really good. I think it was uh, specifically around the idea of trying to raise the ECAP scores. I mean, it, was, uh, it was really good. Yeah. Really yeah, the big liners, so problems. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had the uh, pleasure of working with uh, Michelle on the NIAS committee, and she was, she was phenomenal. 
had a, another question, Christine. Um, the Title I uh, decrease and the elimination of that position, do the numbers of students still work with the number of instructors we have? We're going to have to reevaluate. I met with Sherry Lewis, who runs Title I. I met with her today. We're going to have to reevaluate how kids are assigned to Title I. And have we done, I know that there's been some action of decreasing the, I can't remember the terminology for it, but uh, kind of eliminating or, or pulling some of the kids off of it. Right, right, um, we'll do some of that. And elementary schools have been reducing their Title I yeah. positions periodically. Um, but That's there's just too much, there's too much uncertainty this year, so. Good. <coughs> okay. Well, that's quite a quite a mess of progress on this, uh, in this arena. More to yeah. Okay, WRCC. Thanks. I have a couple items to share with you tonight. Uh, first of all, our Future Business Leader of America organization just had their spring leadership conference in Burlington uh, last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at the Sheraton. We have 50 current registered FBLA members as of right now, and out of those 50, 17 students attended the conference. And I'm pleased to announce that we had 18 first place winners, sec nine second place winners, seven third place winners, four fourth place winners, and four fifth place winners. <clears throat> A who's who in Vermont. FBLA go, went to Teresa Glayback, and we also won the most spirited chapter, also the most outstanding chapter across the state of Vermont, which includes a three and a half foot tall trophy that we have, that Brown and Earl hasn't seen since 1999, and that'll be in display in the office downstairs. And uh, our own Mary Beth Cornell won the Outstanding Advisor of the Year, which is very nice as well. And these students are now eligible to attend the FBLA National Leadership Conference in Anaheim, California at the end of June also. All 17 of them, huh? All 17 of them. If they place, they're eligible. I'm also excited to share a new class that I'm really excited about for next year. And it's going to be for ninth and 10th graders only. And it's going to be an introduction <coughs> to STEM, science, technology, and math. And it's going to be called Foundations in Career Technology. And our goal is to get more kids involved and exposed to our career center programs and also STEM professions that are available and STEM prof professions that will be available 10 years from now that we don't even know that will be out there. So that is our goal with that class and we look forward to expanding the program in years to come. We're only going to start out with one section next year see how it goes and how many numbers we students we get signed up which um, is, is there a uh, you said one section so I'll be picked up by one of the current instructors in one of these areas yes actually Amy Anthony is going to be uh, team teaching with a high school teacher so we look we're excited about it That's it. Well, that's great because that's certainly the focus at local, state, and national yes. level is STEM. Okay. Uh, Ron is elsewhere tonight, and uh, I do not have anything specific from, from the chair. Is there any unfinished business? Um, 
Any new business? The next <coughs> regularly scheduled board meeting is the 15th of April, which is the beginning of school vacation. Can we um, dispense with that unless something drastic happens between now and then? That's customary. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we have gone both ways on that. Um, in view of all that we have going on with the interviewing process, do the administration see that as a, as a problem? No. Uh, and we could do approvals. The meeting, next meeting after that would be May. Six. Six. May 6th. Yeah. And we can, we can do appointments. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that would be of, of importance? I, I don't have anything other than that I, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the next uh, board education, what we're going to do there, but um, that could be just as easily on May 6th, it could be on April 15th. Is that dinner April 25th as well? Is that what you mean? Is it, is it the 25th? Uh, community dinner, right. Yeah. Um, so there's not like we'll forget who each other is. We'll, we'll have a chance to get together. Uh, thanks for reminding on that. I had more copies of that if there's anybody who didn't get one. The, the education dinner, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, okay, well, um, then we will dispense with April 15th meeting, uh, and our next meeting will be on May 6th. And along those lines, I had uh, mentioned to Mike that it's uh, under board education, we've kind of been trying to move around from high school BAMS Career Center, um, but we haven't heard from the Career Center. And I went back and looked at some of the ideas that were suggested back in the fall uh, when we had our planning session, right? So I did go back and actually look at what we talked about. And um, one of the things and it's of interest to me is the uh, math and literacy uh, at the Career Center, not just specifically the fact that we have courses, but the embedded part of it and how it's being integrated into the other, um, other courses. I think it's pretty interesting uh, program they have and they're refining it and adding to it to uh, get the basic math math and literacy skills uh, involved in pretty much every department I believe yes. over there and Mike said he thought he could um, present us with a presentation so I would assume if you could do it April 15th you could do it on May 6th yeah yeah okay so we'll count on that and uh, the uh, band, the band spring concerts tomorrow. Isn't that right? Yeah, thank you. Yes. So yes. tomorrow at second yes. in the auditorium. The early spring concerts. Ah, they have that now. And uh, that, is, that, is that the Pops concert? Or is no, that, no, that's, that's, that's the band. next one is the Pops concert. <laughs> but they're all tremendous. They really are. If you haven't had a chance to go on here those um, great okay anything else for the good of the cause if not I move we adjourn second <laughs> all in favor aye 35 minutes <laughs>